So folks, another day, another cheeky little component video for you. And what I'm gonna try and do is put this together. I have done one on wiring up like your interlocks and your e-stops to a safety relay. But what I'm gonna try and do on this one is do the actual functioning of a safety relay, how you get your components into the circuit and how it works. Because a lot of people, they get a bit worried about these, but they're nothing to worry about. Now we have got pilts here. This is the most, most part of the most complicated out of a lot of them. But if you can get your head around this one, you can get your head around most of them. Now, got my little schematic here. I do like a good schematic. So what I'm gonna do is go from this and show you real life on this. Now I do know this looks a bit ghetto, but knocked it up and it's gonna help me kind of put my point across in the best way I can, not always. Now this is fused down, don't get worried. So on here, we've got our A1 and our A2. So this is your plus voltage your minus voltage. This is your control side. So I've got this step down to this power supply. So we've got a 24 coming in. You've got your A1 and your A2 down in the top and bottom. So the main thing you got to think about with safety relays is you're all, not always, but in a good environment, you're going to have two channels. Now, nine times out of 10, they are actually S11 and S12 is your channel one, and S21 and S22 is your channel two. Now you want closed loops on these. You're gonna have your devices, like your interlocks, your e-stops. I've got some other devices around our factory that I can stick up on this as well. But in theory, you want always a closed loop for this to be energized. Because if, why this, you want this is, if there was a loss of power or one of these components fails, you want it fail safe for these to drop open as they normally open anyway. So you're gonna have normally close. I'm not an artist, but you get the point. So these two channels, and they also need to be made within 200 milliseconds of each other, or at a fault. There are so many fail safes on these, just to keep anyone from anything from happening. So, on here, I've got my two channels. Now there is another thing that you've got to get your head around with pilts. Now if you can, this is normally just with pilts because on here, we've got a short circuit protection and a non short circuit protection. Now, bugger that. So, your channel one, your K1, and your K2. Now, that's what one of these looks like inside. We have one of these fail, so I took it apart so you can see. That's the two main relays that you have to click in, and that's going to make your channels. So, what you can see here. So what you can see here is your channel one and your channel two. Now, your channel one is working on plus voltage. So when you're testing with this, you're gonna want your negative lead on your A2, and you wanna be testing with your positive lead across these two terminals, or then each individual device as you're going through your fault finding. But with your K2, that's using negative voltage on the short, on the short circuit protection, because what that's doing is if it had any shorts, it's gonna have positive to negative. And that's how it knows if it's got a short across these the circuits themselves. So, and I'm gonna show you that when we get to the actual testing bin. And then within this circuit, as you can see, I've said this before, but these are all mechanically connected, these contacts. Doesn't mean they won't short across them, but what it does mean is if one of these welds, then it's gonna be faulted. And then we've got our Y32. Now that is your feed. Do PLC or anything that's monitoring the device. Now your reset button, this reset circuit is coming from your S12. So I've got it here. It's piggyback off the S12, because what that does is once your channel one's made, then that gives you 24 volts. But it then also goes through your normally closed auxiliary of the contact of anything that's been fed through these contacts. So once this pulls in, turns that to normally open, and then you can't reset it, as you can see. Because on there, you saw that flash of the reset, and then our output now is showing that that contact has now been pulled in, but I can't reset that. Now, we do, do normally do it here, because these are gonna be on the outside of panels. We'll take a 24 volt to here from your A1. Now, that is then fed from here 
through the button. So when it goes through your button, when this is made, because of quite a few contacts that come in, this then will become normally open, killing the power to the light. Showing on the outside of the panel that this is not in fault. But as you're gonna see, because you might not see it from outside, as soon as I break this circuit, is this, that has now become normally closed. So the way this goes, so this is going through normally closed if you contact. Then it comes around. Again, I was told at school that art was not for me and it'd be a waste of my time and a teacher's time. That's the God's honest truth. And then it comes into your reset. So I'll have a little reset kind of feature with these pills is. If I pop this lid up, well, I'm buggering it this time. So we've got a short circuit protection side and a non short circuit protection side. But we've also got different reset modes. So you've got your automatic, which you don't really like. As soon as them contacts are made, get a reset. And then we've got our high side, so that will reset. As soon as I press that button. Now, what I'm going to show you is also is it won't like you changing it with the power on. So let that die. This stuff is going to show you this time it won't reset until you let go of the button because that's looking for the dropping voltage. Now this feature is called the open closed door one. So this won't actually reset until the circuit is broken and allow you to make it. So now we're gonna go on to the juicy bit of testing this if we had a fault. So let me get back to where I had it on. So we've got a power, input one, input two, out, if this is energized, reset, and fault. So when you're fault finding on one of these circuits, you wanna remember, keep this simple. Now, all you gotta worry about is your two channels. Start with, make sure you've got your two channels in. Now, what I'd always start with is, if you think these motor switches are on doors, you wanna be opening and shutting the doors. You wanna make sure your restops are in they've been pulled out of them, they're not being pushed in. And what you got to think is everything on this is normally closed. So we want voltage on both sides of this relay. So what you want to be doing is you want to be going back on your aid to, so you want to be going, and you can see, I've got my 24 volts. But with these pilts, and it's mainly just with these pilts, you don't want to get caught out. And this is what I meant by, you got your plus and your minus voltage. Because now if I go across, I'm still on my A2, I've got nothing. And this is what I meant by, you want to be going plus to your A1. If I can do this one I'm doing, I'll be amazed. So with my plus on my lead on my A1, see, so you now can see, that's what I mean by the negative voltage. And that's because that's how it does the short circuit protection. So, if you made sure that all your door switches are made, next step I'll show you. Now, keeping it still simple, we're still doing our channel one and our channel two, but what you gotta think is, you just got two channels to be testing. So if I put this out, see, now I've lost my channel two. So if I go, positive to my A1. So I'm starting at the first lead, which is down here. So I've got my yellow. So I've got my 24 up here. But I haven't got my 24 there. So the yellow is coming up up here. It's coming through this door switch first. So I'm going to be testing on my green because that's the other side of my channel too. And I've got my 24. So you, all you've got to think of do it logically and you test every single step. 
see loss of voltages. Because I can't reiterate this. This is where you've got to be constantly looking for your break in your voltage. So yellow's yeah, coming down here, it's coming into this mag switch. I'll be checking my green. And there you go. Now if I move that back, my channel two's back in. That's gonna allow me to reset it back up to the green, back to the yellow. And got some voltage. My relay's kicked in. Next step you could do, and this is nine times out of ten what I'll do if you put me ranch here, continuity. If I do that again, I've lost off channel two. You just go around and you're checking your continuity. Because nine times out of ten you won't be able to get. So you just check on your back of your devices. You got an open circuit there. Because you might not be able to get like a, a plus or negative. Now, because I pushed that back on and the two channels didn't come in together, we've got fault come up on our points itself. Now, that won't reset any fault that appears on your pilch relay, won't reset until you've actually broke the circuit. Put it back in, bolt your uncle, and vanish your aunt. So, we'll go over it, just this one recap, dead quick. What you want Everything on your e-stop circuit is going to be normally closed, as you can see there. So you want to check continuity or your voltage but from each step. So from here, the yellow, and through my mag switch. So I check my green next, then I check my e-stop, make sure I've got voltage across this one. And that's where you find out if you've got a break in your channel. That's what this is doing. It's always having a high side of voltage. If anything goes wrong, so this power supply goes, it's going to open them contacts and it's going to kill feed to any of these contacts. And if that's up someone, you're allegedly approved. And if you've made it through this long, you're definitely allegedly approved.